Let's just watch for one second mm -hmm. as he and the First Lady uh, exit. She looks lovely in a white ensemble, as we saw the Duchess of Cornwall as well. And they are now all greeting each other warmly, shaking hands. I cannot lip read. However, it yeah. looks like a warm and formal meeting. There's been a lot of speculation about what will happen behind closed doors between the Prince of Wales and the President. The Prince of Wales has taken on climate change as his cause celebre, as the main issue uh, of his public life, I would say. And there are those wondering if that will come up when the two meet privately. Not now. That's not happening now. This is more ceremonial, to be sure. That is a great point. I mean, that people feel that, that uh, Prince Charles would be remiss if he... Uh, We're getting a little bit of reverb here We're in the studio. We're getting a little a strange um, audio moment. Okay, thank you. The, Prince Charles would be remiss if he somehow omitted the cause that has mm -hmm. become so important to him when he meets with, you know, the leader of the United States. And the, again, you see the First Lady... Uh, and the Duchess of Cornwall. You know, I have begun to think that the women coordinate their outfits, John, because it looks so lovely when they wear the same color, and I have seen this now several times. Yeah. I've begun to think that there's an advanced team that really goes to work uh, here. I will say the men did also. They're both wearing right. business They're wearing suits, suits today. Suits, you're right. Uh, and there she is, the queen, Queen Elizabeth Max. Uh, just walk us through the ceremonial greeting here, the do's and don'ts of what you say and don't say. So that handshake there uh, represents the official opening of this state visit, um, also greeting the First Lady there. Uh, next, we'll have the national anthems. I believe the uh, American national anthem will play out first, um, and then the British national anthem. They're going to go inside for a brief moment. That hasn't been fully explained to me yet. They're going to go inside, and then we're going to have the official guard as well. They'll be the guard of honour. And uh, we'll also have that moment where the president will be invited to inspect the guard. You remember what happened last year, guys, when uh, it was slightly awkward where he walked in front of the Queen, seen as a bit of a faux pas. But uh, to be fair to him, Prince Philip would normally have carried out that role. The Queen wasn't completely aware of what to do either. Um, so we're going to see that guard of honour soon, and we're going to see the national anthems as well. There's the gun salute, we believe. Did I hear something? Or it could have just been a bang. Or could he, they could have just been slamming the door, Abby. Um, who knows? Uh, but Guns. Let's go. listen for one second. <laughs> so 241 gun salutes and then a series of other salutes from around the city. And Max, just once again, the president, President Trump will be the third U.S. president, uh, I understand, to get this type of ceremonial uh, pomp and circumstance. George W. Bush and Barack Obama were the first two, but President Trump will not be staying at Buckingham Palace. The official reason given is renovations, correct? Yes, but there are hundreds and hundreds of rooms in the palace, so some people suggesting that perhaps the Queen doesn't want him to stay. I don't think that's true. The whole of the front facade, actually, is completely closed at the moment because it's being renovated. Asbestos in the basement, the wiring and the pipework is in a terrible state. So he'll certainly be much more comfortable in the palatial British ambassador's residence in Regent's Park. So I think uh, he's been convinced that that's OK. It's not seen as a slight. What I will point out, though, lots of people talking about how this is the most controversial uh, state visit by a U.S. president. Actually, President Bush was a very controversial, is still a very controversial figure in this uh, country as well because of the Iraq war. There were demonstrations at that time too. So I wouldn't necessarily say this is the most controversial visit, but certainly more controversial than President Obama, who's a very popular figure in the U.K. So, Abby, I interrupted you as we watched the president and first lady arrive there at Buckingham Palace. And as we were talking, the president likes the pomp and circumstance of the 41-gun salute. But what... What does he hope to get out of this visit? This is partly about solidifying his place as an American president. I think there has been a sense that uh, that the, that his feuds with all these various people have diminished his relationship with the UK, that special relationship. And I think this allows him to reestablish that. But I think he's also setting the, the foundation for establishing the relationship with whoever succeeds Theresa May. This administration is really trying uh, to make sure that they are holding the hand of whoever that... Uh, 
uh, that individual ends up being. And I think that this is partly also about making it clear that the United States uh, wants to remain close to Britain, but that they want to remain close to Britain uh, under certain conditions uh, uh, in which there is a trade deal, as Clarissa pointed out. They're having meetings with uh, British and U.S. Uh, business leaders this week during this visit. Uh, the president's been talking about doing a bilateral trade deal with the U.K., but he's also been criticizing Theresa May's handling of Brexit, not with any kind of specificity, not saying exactly what she should do, but just saying that she hasn't done it the right way and even telling her that he sh she should have listened to him about it. Now President Trump is in a position where he can really cultivate uh, the next, uh, the, her successor. And I think you're already seeing some of these uh, people who are running for that position trying to cultivate President Trump, praising him publicly, defending him against his critics here in the UK. Uh, and uh, that is part of the objective here, just as President Trump tries to solidify uh, what comes next politically for Britain. Uh, and, and as he's just trying to make it clear that uh, the special relationship will continue, but it's going to continue in a different way way than it has been for past U.S. presidents. That's exactly what he wants. And again, we are, I believe, waiting for them all to come back outside again after a brief sojourn inside. And we just did see the tape replay again of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen, greeting uh, President Trump. She was wearing a lime green. I call it mint. A mint. That was mint. A mint dress. All, all the women were wearing hats. She looks terrific. And Clarissa Sisson pointed out to me that in the president's first visit with the Queen last year, the, the, the private discussion went on a lot longer than was scheduled for which would not have happened, it's been, you know, indicated to me, unless she was enjoying the conversation to some point. So this may be a meeting that she has been looking forward to, and it certainly is one the president has been looking forward to, because as everyone has noted, it is the pomp, it is the ceremony that the president is so drawn to. Well, I can tell you one thing, John, if Queen Elizabeth does enjoy that private conversation, we will never hear about mm -hmm. it because uh, perhaps her greatest attribute is her inscrutability, the fact that she remains a complete enigma. Uh, she is apolitical, never gives her own views uh, on various situations. There was no official comment even from the palace after that awkward uh, moment where President Trump appeared to be sort of walking in front of her last year. Her job or how she sees her role as the monarch uh, is to serve her country. And in this case, she is serving her country by laying on a, a, a banquet, a state banquet, a huge lavish ceremony as we're seeing take place now for the president of the United States at a moment where, John, the UK actually really does need the United States. The special relationship, as it comes to be known, is facing a number of challenges. There are real disagreements about the Iran agreement, uh, about President Trump putting pressure on the UK not to cooperate with the Chinese company Huawei in building up its 5G network. Uh, there are disagreements about Brexit, what the future of Brexit should look like, what the negotiations should look like. And so I think what we'll see today and tomorrow and into this visit is an attempt on both sides to try to highlight areas of commonality. Um, principally, probably, that will focus on security agreements between the two countries. But underscoring that is the very real and palpable tension uh, that there are more areas of friction and difference than there are of commonality at this stage, John. Let's just talk about what we're seeing on the screen right now. We had just seen the first family of, here we go, there we go. Jared Ivanka Kushner. and Jared Kushner. And is that Tiffany? No, no. Uh, I, I'm not quite sure who I'm that is, sure to be it. honest. But that's a site that the president will no doubt relish because he had indicated he wanted a next generation meeting between his children uh, and, and some of the heirs to the British throne. Max was reporting before uh, that will not happen uh, at this point, Max. We don't expect any next generation meeting. On the other balcony, I should note, I did recognize the U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin taking photos with his phone. There he is. Or maybe they're selfies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, also. From the balcony. Woody, <laughs> Woody Johnson as well there. Okay, the uh, U.S. Uh, who's, ambassador. Uh, very close to the president, I'm told as well. So, so no yeah. next generation um, meeting, Max? So this is interesting. Well, it's been made very clear to me that's not happening, certainly not in a formal sense. What you will see, uh, I have been pointed out that, you know, you will see Harry and William that came into this sort of suggestion uh, at different events, but as part of other guests. So after this ceremonial welcome, Harry will be at this private lunch within the palace. Uh, clearly, Ivanka and Jared are there as well. And then Prince William will be at tonight's state banquet. So you can see the guard there lining up and, and uh, President Trump will be asked 
uh, and invited along to sort of inspect the guard. We'll see how he copes with that this, this time. Didn't go particularly well last time. Uh, before that, we'll hear the national anthems of the United States um, and also the United Kingdom as well. In the past, President Obama has spoken through the British national anthem, which was another faux pas. Literally, these events, even for British people, are littered uh, with mind, uh, you know, you know, traps, social traps, because there's so much etiquette involved. Uh, it's a very simple way of looking at it, really, that the Queen takes precedence. She walks first. She starts the conversation. She holds her hand out if you want to shake hands. But actually, uh, President Trump isn't committed to following any of these etiquette rules. He's not a British subject. And actually, on this event, he is on a par with the Queen. They're both heads of state, and this is a, this is a joint event as, part, as, as far as the British establishment is concerned.